Good morning, Rock family. It's my church. I'm so happy to be here. And I'm so happy to welcome all of my friends around the world and all of those who are joining us from everywhere. You know, yesterday we did five hours online uh, with Facebook Live, and actually the Word of God still has more to say to you. Can you believe that? After five hours of speaking about the Word of God and the truth of Jesus, today we still have more to speak to you about. And I woke up today and the Lord spoke to me. I always have a word or a scripture, something that, that is ministering to my heart, something that's on the Lord's heart. And he told me that the word today was alkaline. And I asked him about that. And alkalinity neutralizes acidity. And he said, my spirit in you, when you let it out, neutralizes the acidity of fear. Right now, there is such an acidic atmosphere around us. Church, we have to be his bride, his lovers, his reflection. He told me Galatians 5.1 is where I want to focus today. It says this, Paul's writing, let me be clear. The anointed one has completely set us free. Not partially, but completely and wonderfully free. Say it. I'm free. free. I'm free. It doesn't matter what my circumstances are. I'm free. We must always cherish this truth and stubbornly, church, stubbornly refuse to go back into the bondage of our past. Let me speak to you. The bondage is sometimes right here in the present. The bondage is in our mind in the future as we continue to project fear and worry and pain. I want you to put your hand on the back of your neck right here. In the name of Jesus. Come Holy Spirit. I want you to close your eyes. The Lord is with us. Amen. Amen. He's with us. And take a breath. Take a big breath. Because the Holy Spirit lives in you. Breathe in. And let it out. And when you breathe in, you breathe in hope. And when you let it out, you exhale fear and doubt and worry. And I speak over your endocrine system, your hypothalamus gland. I speak over your entire hormonal system that is affected by fear and stress and anxiety. And I command it all in the name of Jesus to come into the shalom peace of God, which is yours from the beginning. So come Holy Spirit. We say reset, a reset in your brain right now, in your brain chemistry. Reset from fear to faith right now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, no more worry, no more fear. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let the word of God build you up in hope today. And do you know there are things to be thankful for? And every minute we've had two friends recover from COVID who were in an intensive care situation. We know uh, over 80,000 people that have recovered in the United States. There are hope stories, everybody, but when you affix yourself on negativity, on the news, 24-7 that's going on in your brain, that yeah. acidity washes over yeah. you, and that's what you breathe in. Yeah. We must be breathing in hope. And let's face it, hey, there's something to be thankful for. There is toilet paper. There's toilet paper for sale in some stores all across the world today. In fact, my husband had to go to the Bay Area for work and he said, I don't really have to go, but somebody wants to give me a 24 pack of double toilet paper and they want to give me some wipes, some antiviral wipes. So I think I'm going to go work down there. I thought that was awesome. You know, it used to be money. Now it's toilet paper, but it's whatever works right now. We're going to talk this morning about priorities. I want you to keep breathing deeply. I want you to let the word of God sink into you. We need hope today, church. We need hope. And we have to refocus on the priority of God in this unseen time when everything is changing and nothing is secure except the one who created everything. He's secure. Come on. And you are secure in him. Let me tell you what a priority is in case you've forgotten because it's really easy in a storm. I have no idea what I'm doing today. I'm still in my same pajamas I've been in a week ago, right? What's the priority? It's defined as a principal thing, establishing the most important thing. First things first, placing an order of importance. The highest value of worth upon is a priority. It's the first among all others. So the key to a successful life and achieving goals is the prioritization of time. That's nothing new, right? But right now you're like, I got a lot of that. A lot of you have a lot of time, but we don't know what's going on. Yeah. We don't know where the time is going because some of us go from sunup to sundown and beyond on our phones. 
scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And you know, everybody, I'm all for Facebook and I'm all for staying informed, but the more you're scrolling, looking for something, the more your brain chemistry is agreeing with fear because there's way more fear out there than, than there is faith. So we need to stop and we need to get still and we need to be before the Lord and have hope. So on your prioritizing, when you are prioritizing your time, even in this pandemic, you're preserving and protecting your life and you're preserving and protecting your health because without priorities, everybody, we're preoccupied with the unimportant. Or is that just me? If you don't have any priorities, you are preoccupied with the unimportant. You know, it, it, we have to focus on not a future prediction from a source that distributes fear. We have to focus on the here and now the Lord is speaking. We don't need human speculation. We need Holy Spirit wisdom. We need Holy Spirit revelation in this hour. The Lord is moving. So I want to talk to you about something you probably know. If you don't know what its term is, you, you think about it because we all think about it. There was a guy who was a behavioral scientist named Maslow, and he created a hierarchy of needs. And it was basically data that, that said, this is what all human beings are motivated by. This is what all human beings are driven by. Here's, here's the list. Water, food, clothes, housing, protection, security, preservation, self-actualization, and significance. So the stress before COVID was called the rat race in America, or you know, trying to keep up with the Joneses, all of that. Now it's completely different, isn't it? But nothing has really changed because it consists of human beings striving for those things I just mentioned, right? Food, water, clothing, significance. And what's odd is when we think about the priority that's driving most human beings, not just now, everybody, but even before this whole thing started, it's just simple survival. That's what consumes us day and night. We pray for protection for our jobs and our significance and our housing and our provision, but human need has also started to drive religion. Wait, before you want to shoot me, just wait. I'm not saying don't pray for your needs. And I'm not saying we don't pray specifically for things. And, we, and, and I know the word of God in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 says we're to pray without ceasing in all circumstances, giving thanksgiving to God. But I am speaking about where is yours and my, at this moment, priority in my everyday, my monthly, my yearly. What's my priority? What does God say about it? In Matthew 6, here's what Jesus says. And it smacked me right in the head. So... Here, here it is on a silver platter. Jesus said about the priority of our Heavenly Father. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. The most important statement made by the Lord Jesus is that one. Because it establishes what should be as kingdom people our first priority. You are the beloved of you are the beloved. And, and those of you who even haven't met Jesus yet, at the end of this message, we're going to give you an opportunity. Even in uncertainty, even in these times, seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness has got to be our first priority. Because every single need we have on Maslow's list and everything else that the Lord has for us in all creation is given to us when we put things in right order. That's right. So I don't know about you, but I completely missed the entirety of what Jesus gave to me because I have imposed on myself so much stress and frustration worrying about my basic needs in my life. Is that you? I don't know. It's me. It's me. So, so this message is as much for me as it is for you. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 25, therefore I tell you, do not worry what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? That statement just smacks Maslow's hierarchy of needs, boom, and contradicts the order. Yeah. Jesus turns it upside down and goes, whoa, here's a warning light right off. To worry means to be consumed in thought 
mentally preoccupied and remaining in a state of fear of the unknown. And some of us are breathing at every moment right now. During a state of worry, we're rehearsing the future. Gloom and doom. What could happen? And guess what, everybody? We're compromising our health by doing it. Fear is a catalyst for immune system breakdown and makes us more susceptible to viruses. Okay, there it is. Matthew 6, 24. Moving back to what Jesus says, he continues, refuse, refuse to worry about tomorrow. Deal with each challenge that comes your way one day at a time. Tomorrow will take care of itself. How are we dealing with the challenges right now, everybody? The way we deal with it is we prioritize. According to 2 Corinthians 10, 5, we destroy arguments. Sometimes they're up here, aren't they? Tear down every lofty opinion. The ones about worry, the ones about fear or provision. Pull them down. And, and, and because they come against as an assault to what God just said. He said, I'm your everything. I'm your father. I love you. I provide for you. He's the king of the universe. So we have to remain church wholeheartedly committed to the kingdom of God and his righteousness in his Christ as the first mode of action. Seek, to seek, to seek means to pursue. Do you know that it also means to explore? Has your, has, has your life fallen into religion? God is not religious. He wants to have you consume him as he, as he ministers to you. The exploration of a relationship is exciting. It's not boring. When you seek something, it means to possess a passion, to desire intimately, to know the object of our search. It means to preoccupy oneself with the very thing we are seeking. Are you preoccupied with him? Preoccupied with coronavirus? Come on, the kingdom has to be pursued actively. If we are seeking first the kingdom, then we need to understand it. In Matthew 6.33, when Jesus said, seek first the kingdom and everything will be given to you. Mm -hmm. The kingdom word here that he used refers to God's government. I want you to pull out of your circumstances and get a big picture view here. Yeah. Kingdom used by Jesus in this passage refers to God's government, God's rulership. His dominion over all the earth. The kingdom of God means God's will is executed. His jurisdiction, heaven's influence, God's administration, his impact, his influence in every aspect of the whole entire world. He's not limited. Our thinking is limited. God's intent is to bring his perfect will of love and transformation to our culture, to our values, to our morality, to our lifestyle, to bring salvation and healing and freedom to every human life. That's the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Mankind's assignment from the very beginning, your assignment and mine as lovers of the most high is to establish the influence or the culture of heaven by representing the nature and values and morality of God on this earth without judgment, with love. We were never meant to be a religion. Come on. We were meant to be a royal family. Come on. And you're in it. God's not waiting for you to get it perfect. But when you're caught up in fear, being fed to you every day by the media, your conversations are projecting hell's influence, not heaven's. Jesus has authority over this virus, but he must become our focus. And then everything is added to us. That includes your physical needs, your emotional, spiritual, psychological, social, financial, your security, your self-significance, your sense of worth, and your purpose. All of it is in his hands and he has nothing but great gifts to give you. Even in this moment, God is speaking to you and me to boost our confidence that he has a commitment. Let me say this even boldly. God has an obligation to sustain his creation. Everybody. God did not create this beautiful earth to watch it collapse. And he did not create you 
in his image to suffer failure and suffer defeat. That's not why he created you, and this is not his jurisdiction. This is the enemy trying to do this, but what God will do to the enemy, what the enemy means for your destruction, God will work for good, and you can count on that. We have an invitation this morning. Wherever you are, if it's nighttime, daytime, middle of the afternoon, you and I have an invitation right now to refocus our priorities from our basic needs of being consumed with what about, what about, what about, and shift it into maintaining and cultivating this deep and intimate relationship with God first. To shift from focus, me, 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 to bring forth the kingdom. Matthew 6, 6 through 11 says your heavenly father knows what you need before you even ask him. Do you believe that? But first we pray as Jesus taught, our father dwelling in the heavenly realms, may the glory of your name be the center on which our lives turn. Manifest your kingdom realm and cause your every purpose to be fulfilled on earth as it is in heaven. And verse 10 says, we acknowledge you, God, as our provider of everything we need each day. But what's it going to take? What do you have to give up in order to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness? You might have to give up your phone half the day. You might have to give up complaining to your family members. When we are complaining, I'm not saying we don't need to talk things through. But when we're complaining, it, it, it is by my... Friend Rodney Hogue's assertion, it's the worship music of hell. And you know what? We don't need any more worship music from hell. We've got enough of that coming out of the media. What we need is the worship music like Danny played. We need the worship for the king, about the king. Because as we sing unto him, his presence increases. And then people find themselves caught up in hope. They find themselves caught up in joy despite their circumstances. God has come to bring you hope today. But you have to make a decision, church. You have to decide this day who you're serving. And God didn't ask you to come as a slave. He said, come, son and daughter. Come, come, come to me, you weary ones, heavy laden, heavy burdened, downtrodden. God knows where your stimulus money is. He knows where all of your provision comes. He's not withholding from you. He's inviting you. Do you know, we've had things happen in our ministry all over the world where, where we're just praying and we're seeking God and we're watching things happen. We had hundreds of people healed yesterday online when we were teaching about learning how to control your fearful thoughts. Who would have thought in three hours, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people getting healed because they decided to believe God. They decided to believe him at his word. I'm not just up here talking about him. He is coming in a very real and tangible way right now. No, this is not how you want to do church, but church, you are the church. Come on. You're the church. When you are going down the road trying to, to just exercise and, and get your head together, smile at somebody, even if you're six feet away, tell them that their, their dog is beautiful. Hmm. Speak nice things, be kind. People are needing engagement. Yeah. If they won't look at you, yell across the street, Hey, I hope you're having a good day. You may think that is irrelevant, but I am saying to you what I said yesterday online. There are some people who have no human interaction because they have no family and they're completely isolated and the words of kindness and hope and love that you're releasing are the only words they may hear all day. Be the light. Soak him up and give it all away. Freely you are receiving this download of love from God and turn around and give it away. But I don't know your story. I don't know your circumstances. I know mine. All I want to do is be with God. And I find myself dreaming about flying because I, I, I leave and go places all the time. And the Lord said, you can still come with me in the heavenly realms, even if you're not on an airplane. I invite you to spend more time with him than you do thinking about what's going to happen. Practice. If you spend 10 minutes with God, spend 15 with God. And right now you have an invitation to pray with me. Our team's going to put a prayer up on the screen. This is not a rote prayer. 
This is an invitation for you to go, man, God, I don't know what's going to go on, but I am sick of living day to day like I am living. I need some hope. I need some joy. I need some peace. Shalom peace. So if you would look at your screen, we have a prayer that we're going to pray all together. And then I'm going to give you an invitation, if you don't know Jesus, to come and meet him as your Lord and Savior, as your provider, as your lover, as your best friend, and to be infused with his Holy Spirit that he gave to us so that we could be his light in this dark time. So thank you, Holy Spirit. As we pray this together, I pray that you would infuse this truth into every cell in our mind and our body and our soul. So Father, you chose us before the foundations of the earth and we stand in your love and in your truth. So as we pray together, Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are coming upon us in a new way right now in Jesus' name. Let's start. Lord, I love you. I confess I worry sometimes continually. I have put all the needs of myself and my family in front of you. I have particularly worried and placed a priority on the following things. I don't know what that is for you, but give it to the Lord. Lord, I, I'm just constantly worried that I don't have any money. God, I'm constantly obsessed. I lost my job. God, I'm obsessed. My son is sick and I cannot see a doctor. Lord, my aunt has the virus and she's, she's old. God, these things consume me. You give them over to him right now. He will give you life. I willingly surrender these things to you now. I ask that you forgive me for putting these things and these people in front of you and doubting you would provide for me, Lord, in every way. I break every agreement with fear and worry or even self-sufficiency. I break the power of the lie that you will not add anything to my life or everything to my life if I seek you first. That's a lie. He will. I end my endless thoughts that I have to find my own significance in this world because you won't do that for me. For those of you struggling with insignificance, he is your significance. Pray, I lay down my life and I pick up the kingdom you gave to me to rule and reign with you in your righteousness. Teach me your ways, Lord. Let me walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart so that I may have a reverent fear and awe of you. Prioritize every step of every day until I am living with just the singular focus of you, of you, God, of your kingdom coming and your will being done in me and through me in Jesus' name. So as we stand in the presence of God, receiving more of his love, if you have never prayed to Jesus, you have never thought that you needed anyone or anything, I can assure you he's for you. And if you would like to receive him into your life to change you from the inside out so that you can live free from bondage and fear, I just ask you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, I recognize my limitation. I recognize that I can do nothing apart from you, God. Jesus, I recognize that I have sin in my life and difficulty in so many areas. Lord, I'm afraid to believe you, but I want to believe you. 
I need you, Jesus. So would you come? And would you take over my thoughts? Would you take over my heart and my emotions? Yes. Would you move in all the wounds of my life, God? And would you make me like you, Jesus? So I can love my family. So I can be restored to the people, Lord, that I have hurt and the ones who've hurt me so that I can be your light in this dark world and bring hope. In Jesus' name.